we're finally ready to put the workflow together. And if you have followed along and done everything I've suggested up until now, this part should actually be really, really easy to do because you have everything in place. It's just a matter of putting it all together in the actual workflow. The other thing by now that you've hopefully gathered is that important distinction that I made at the top of the course about the difference between project management and workflow. With project management, you have tasks and things to do and you need to track who's doing what, when, where, and how. With a workflow management tool and what we're about to create is a series of steps that are triggered by some event and a lot of it is based on the automation of those steps. That's what a workflow management tool, that's what 17 hats will do for you. And if you've done everything that I've walked you through up until now, then you're going to find this part extremely simple to complete. Let's see what this looks like. It's time to set up our workflow. And if you've done everything exactly as I've laid it out for you in the prior three lessons of this course, then you're going to start to see why this is going to be really quick and easy. And if you remember, I had you go through the whole process and lay it all out in a document. If you haven't done this, go back and do the other lessons. Don't go straight to this. You'll be lost. And so we're going to go over to the document that we created because this is where I was careful to outline the process step by step, what needed to happen and in what order. And then in bold, I, I identified the things essentially that were going to need, need to be added into the workflow. As you're going to see in a minute, when I go to create a new item in a workflow, I'm either going to send an email or include a to-do or include a pause. So it's really simple. Not a lot to choose from there. But what we did have to do, which we did previously, is create all the email templates that were going to be needed in order that, at this point, putting the workflow together is just going to be a matter of click, add, click, add, click, add, and maybe tweaking a few options. Before I show you this, I want to go back to the account settings and show you what I actually did with the templates because I realized as I was testing this app that... I was having trouble identifying which email templates were the ones that I created because we have the defaults. And you can get rid of the defaults, but I don't recommend getting rid of the defaults because in some cases, even here, I used them as a guide for how to create the templates that I needed. So what I did do is I edited the names of the, e of the email templates to include my name in the front. So I know this is a template that I've created. And especially if you start building multiple workflows out and you have email templates that are specific to that workflow, then you might want to do something in the name that identifies the workflow that you intend to use it for. On the other hand, if you have one that's just going to be generic and that will work, for example, for sending out a contract in any workflow, you know, then it doesn't matter. But I just want you to think about these things. The more you think and plan ahead, the easier this gets to do. Once you're finished creating this workflow, there's one really important thing I need to warn you about. And that is that before you use this on an actual client, please, please, please make sure you test this. Get a friend or colleague to help you and let them pretend to be a new client and let them go through the workflow process. Let them be the recipient of the emails and the contracts that are set up in that workflow. It's really important. Otherwise, you could end up making a fool of yourself if it doesn't work properly when you're using it on a real client. So do make sure that you test your workflow out with a subject. It's more than likely going to be the case that you're going to find some glitches and you'll thank me for having suggested this because you'll get to fix those things before you are embarrassed in front of an actual client when you're ready to finally put this workflow into action. So if you go over to workflow here, to add a new workflow, simply click this plus sign. Once you've created a workflow, and assuming you haven't actually uh, activated that workflow or assigned it to a customer, then you're going to find it here in the templates. So I click over on templates over here, and here's the workflow that I just went in and created uh, moments ago, actually, uh, by hitting the plus sign. And what we're going to do, if you go to uh, create it, it's this simple. You're going to name it. You're going to choose the calendar that it goes to. And optionally, you can include some notes. That's all, that's, that's all you missed. <laughs> so now that we're in the workflow, and this is where you'd be taken immediately after creating it, you can simply start adding stuff. So what's the first thing we need to add? Let's go back here. We need to add the welcome email. So let's go over here. And under add, we're going to click action. Notice it says automatically send emails, questionnaires, and more. So we're going to send an email. And the template is going to be Seth welcome email. And then I want to approve it before sending it, right? Because I don't want to mistakenly send out, uh, a, you know, a welcome email with the wrong name. Or maybe I want the opportunity to go in and tweak the email a little bit before it goes out. So I think it's a good idea to, you know, put that sort of stop in there, approve it before sending. And when zero days, in other words, immediately after activating this workflow. And again, optionally, you can include some notes. Let's save that. 
and it's going to add it in. There it goes. And so what's next? The next thing we need to do is we need to add in a to-do. Once confirmation comes in that, smart sheet, that the smart sheet form was filled out, update contact info in 17 hats. Um, so uh, if it's done via questionnaire directly in 17 hats, let me be clear about this, then I won't need to do this step because it's automatically all going to be in there. So I highly recommend you doing that. Um, so in the meantime, I need to add a new to-do. And it's going to be add contact, or I should say add or confirm contact info for client. Now, because keep in mind, I mean, there's a number of different things you can do with 17 ads. I'm only scratching the surface in this course, but one of the things is you can manage leads. So it's very possible the contact information is already in here, uh, in which case you just confirm that it's all accurate. So now we're going to do it um, zero days after the previous item is complete, right? So uh, when done, do nothing or send an email or questionnaire. So let's see what's next. So now we want to check the status of the accounting file access. Now that's going to happen seven days later. So, so we're going to do nothing on this part. Save, and then we just need a minute for this to update. And then we're going to add another to do. Check on accounting access. And seven days may even be a little long. We can say let's j check on it three days after the previous item is complete. So in other words, after that, um, after we've, we've marked off that, we, you know, checked off that to do that, we've confirmed that the contact information is accurate, um, it'll wait three days and we'll check that the uh, accounting access has been set up. And again, we can say when done, send an email or do nothing. Uh, so let's see what's next. If the access to the accounting file has not been made available within a week, or I should say within the time frame, then email a template with just section four. So uh, section four is actually from the bigger document that I had where I outlined the whole, um, uh, the, it's in the actual email template. So let's save this for a second and I'll show you what we're referring to there. Let's go back into the uh, account settings and we'll go back to my templates. It's in the welcome email. So if I go into Seth welcome email, it's section four of this that's being referred to there. So this is where we want to send another email with just this information. So I'm actually just going to copy it, cancel this because I haven't actually changed anything. And then uh, this is the accounting access reminder. So I already created this, you know, for, for this part specifically. But if you haven't, then that's what you'll do is you'll go in and edit it just as I did. And you can create it right now on the fly. Let's go back to the workflow, over to templates. And then let's add another action. We're going to send an email. The template is going to be Seth Accounting Access Reminder. And send it one day after the previous item is complete. Save. As you can see, I've probably already given you enough to just finish off what you're doing on your own. But obviously, I'm going to complete creating the workflow. So next thing is, once the review is complete, customize the contract based on the scope and the project. Add the contract based on the template. So we have a contract template, right? So we're going to, um, we don't really have to customize the contract because the customization that I'm referring to is, you know, populating their name and such. But since everything's automated, since it's 17 hats, we actually don't need to do that, right? This is really a generic set of instructions that I had written out, which would be the process if we weren't using a tool like 17 hats. So that's the beauty of 17 hats is it cuts down on the time. I don't have to do that. All I have to do now is send out the, con the contract email. So action, send an email. And we need to send out the uh, contract. So actually send a contract is what we want to do. Template client service agreement with Nerd Enterprises, Inc. Boom. Um, and then email, you have a signed contract. That's the email template you can use. And notice I have one for that that says, Seth, you have received a contract. So that's the one we want. See how easy this makes it to do when you do the right planning? Having my name in front of the ones that I want, as you can see, just makes this a cinch. Uh, approve before sending, definitely let's say one day after the previous item, uh, completed when signed. And if you remember a couple lessons back, the contract is configured to for us to countersign it after the client signs it. So just a piece of information in case you're wondering about that. And so now we've got that piece in. Let's go back and see what's next. So we sent the, so here we customized, then we sent, so we just accomplished steps six and seven in one step in the workflow in uh in 17 hats. Uh, once the contract is signed, we're going to do the invoice. So now we're going to send 
the send an invoice. So let's add a, another component. Action. Send an invoice. Template. Retainer invoice. That one I didn't rename. I didn't need to. It was pretty straightforward there. Uh, email. Uh, not you have paid an invoice. You have received an invoice. But notice I had, again, Seth. Uh, retainer invoice email. So that's the one we want to choose, right? Because that's the one I created for this purpose. And again, I'm always going to prompt to approve before sending. And we'll just do this one day after the previous item. And completed when paid in full. Right? So we could say completed when sent. But no, in other words, when until they've paid it, I don't want to do anything. Save that. What's next? <laughs> Once a retainer is paid, send an email with a schedule once link inviting the client to schedule four weekly appointments so we can review the process. So we're going to send another email, add action, email, payment confirmation, and scheduling. See how I did that? I just made it so easy to put this together. This, that's why this part's a cinch. The, the, all, everything leading up until now took a little longer, but because I spent that time, this part is just so easy. Uh, and this, this is... Um, we don't need to approve it. Just send it automatically, right? Because I don't need to approve the. I mean, if the payment came in, it came in, right? Send it zero days after the previous item is completed. So as soon as the payment comes in, and as you have seen, no doubt, uh, you can actually you know configure 17 hats to capture the payments for you. So 17 hats will know because they paid it through 17 hats, and then it'll automatically send them out that email right away, which is great. We have one last piece to this, which is a day later. We're going to send a reminder and an email outlining the agenda for the four weekly meetings that we've already asked them to schedule with us. So, of course, that's just one more email that needs to go out. So I say add action. We're going to send an email, and it's going to say, Seth, reminder about scheduling. Just checking to make sure I had the right one there. And zero days after the previous item is completed. Save. And we're done. So that is how we create a workflow. Now we go to projects and we're going to select a client. So let's select Jack Hammer. And we need to just, uh, well, actually, this is just a client, so we need to add a new project. Project name, new client. Budget, I'm just going to ignore all this. Default calendar, Seth. And save. And now we want to assign the workflow to this project. Which, as you can see, is really easy to do. Right down here, workflows. Just click the plus sign. Onboarding. Base date can be today. And we're going to activate it. So as soon as we activate it, it's going to start doing its thing. Now, my friends, before you do this. Before you start any workflows for a real client, I strongly encourage you to test this out. Get a friend or colleague, uh, set up a, a contact for them, set up a project for them, do it as a sample, send it out, let them walk through the process. I would even go down to making the payment on the retainer. Um, and of course, you can refund them the money. It's worth the little bit of money you'll spend on the processing fees just to make sure that it works because that will save you the trouble of having to, having to deal with the potential embarrassment of having this not work or go wrong or realizing that you uh, didn't include an important step. So I would definitely encourage you to test this out. That, my friends, is how you create a workflow using 17 hats to complete the onboarding process. And as I've stressed throughout the entire course, and I'm going to stress it one more time, do the planning, do it right, and this process will be so, so much easier when you sit down to go and do it. I mean, I was going slow because I was explaining things, but the reality is, at this point, if I was just sitting down to do it and not explain anything, I would have had this workflow created in less than five minutes because I would have had everything I needed exactly in place. As always, my friends, I hope you had some fun along the way. I hope you learned something. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. As with any process or any project you're going to take on, planning is the key to making it go smoothly. 
if you take the time to do things the way I've outlined here, namely outlining your onboarding process, if that's what you're going to use this for first, and then creating the templates that you need based on what you identified in the course of creating that outline, and then putting your workflow together last after you've figured out exactly what needs to be done and what templates are needed to get it done. If you follow the process the way I've outlined it, you're going to find that 17 hats is going to be very, very easy to set up, and it's going to save you a ton of time. It's going to take away a lot of your headaches because the whole point of a tool like this is the automation. When you set up that workflow, 17 Hats is going to do a lot of things for you that otherwise you would have to stop and do yourself. So a client emails you a signed contract and then it might take you a day before you can get back to it and countersign and then send an email out with the next thing you need from the client to start getting things set up. This as you've seen by now if you've gone through the course in its entirety is all going to be automated for you with 17 hats and that is going to save you a ton of time create a ton of efficiency and place you in a position where you can be spending more time working on your business instead of working for it.